A very good morning to all of you. Thank you for joining us. And um, we apologize. We had some technical issues. And we were a few minutes late in starting off this meeting. Uh, thank you for the patience and staying with us through this meeting. Uh, my name is Vasudha Sridharan. And on behalf of Cumulus Networks, I'd like to welcome you all to the Cumulus VX webinar. Presenting today will be David Sin and Mohit Mehta. Uh, this webinar will be about 30 to 45 minutes, and we will have a short demo near the end of the presentation. We'll answer a few questions from the participants at the end, if time permits. For those of you interested, you have the opportunity to ask questions during the webinar by using the window marked questions. Simply type in your question and click send. You can also tweet your questions to us. Our Twitter handle is at Cumulus Networks. And with that, I'd like to turn this over to David Sitt. Thank you very much. And thank you again, everybody, for the slight technical difficulties. It's always fun when you're running new desktop software. But um, anyway, what I'd like to talk to you about today is um, the fact is uh, Cumulus VX, which is a new um, solution that we're offering out into the field um, to allow you to um, get an introduction to open networking, what the Cumulus Linux CLI looks like, um, and how you can uh, now all run this all inside of a virtual machine on your desktop. So what is Cumulus VX? So it's a virtual appliance that allows you to go and test out open networking solutions such as you would find with Cumulus Linux in the you know, comfort of your own computing hardware. No longer do you need to have a large stack of hardware equipment as you would find in a lab to be able to test things out like PTM, MLAG, VXLAN, routing, and bridging. You can now all do this inside of a virtual machine in one of the many virtual hypervisors that we support um, and simulate very large topologies, um, large or small topologies based on your needs. This lets you get prepared for the sort of network configurations and options that you may run into in using Cumulus Linux or Cumulus RMP on actual network hardware. So, like I said, what is this about? So some of the things that you can do with this is learn about open networking. For instance, this will give you a, give you a way to go and try out how uh, networking in Linux works at scale. Cumulus Linux is based on uh, running directly inside of Linux, not a shell that runs on top of it. And therefore, this gives you a way to understand how Linux configures things, such as applying IP addresses, setting up routing and bridging, and other such things. This gives you the basis to then be able to launch into leveraging Cumulus Linux or Cumulus RMP in your own environment. Another use case that we're seeing people leverage this for is to prototype. That is, they already are leveraging Cumulus Linux and RMP in their own environment, and what they are wanting to do is simulate network topologies. That is, maybe they are running OSPF today and want to move to BGP. They want to change route policy. Any sort of migrations, new deployments, topology, or protocol changes that they may want to test out prior to actually going into production, because it is in virtual environment, you now can build a very large-scale network based totally on the, you know, the hardware that you have. You may need a fair amount of memory for it, but there are lots of ways to accomplish this. The other option that we're seeing people leverage in this is the ability to go develop new applications, new tools, um, automation, scripts, environments that they might want to run on top of Cumulus Linux. Since Cumulus Linux is open Linux, this gives you a way to go and develop open applications, say, that you know, draw on the native uh, Python, Bash, uh, C compiler, um, uh, things such as Java or other options that you may have in a full open environment that Cumulus Linux is. Sorry. So what does this really look like? Well, you know, a graphic speaks a lot louder than a bunch of words. This gives you a way to, on the left in your desktop or, you know, on your laptop to learn, prototype, and develop it. Develop get ready to deploy into a production environment, and know that the topology, configuration, and options that you're trying to do will actually work. Another key component of Cumulus VX is our new launch of an, our open networking community portal. This is the primary way to provide um, you know, exchange point on Cumulus VX and open networking. This gives you the way of customers and interested parties to go and communicate without having to you know, have it behind the closed wall or only dealing with your software vendor. This allows people to share interesting creative ideas that they've come up with that may be able to help you in your own environment or give you that idea to go, and go off in your own direction. 
This also provides an exchange point for you know, all of the other Cumulus Network products. But I want to be clear that this is not meant to supplant our normal support channel. Definitely if you have a device in production that you need you know, uh, uh, live support on, our GSS team is there to help you um, 24 by 7. So this is not really meant to supplant that, more to give you another channel that you can go and look at to be able to go and try things out and find out more information. So this is just a real quick way on where you can go get to the Open Community Portal and what the actual page looks like. So now that we've talked about some of the things that you can do with Cumulus Linux, let's actually go and take a look at a demo that we can set up. What I'm going to show is how you can take Cumulus Linux running on VirtualBox on a, desktop, on a laptop computer and deploy a two-leaf, two-spine class architecture with a network management VM without doing any automation. Now why did I do this? Automation is definitely the way that people are moving inside of their networks. Um, I did this mostly to be able to show what's going on underneath, say if you were to start leveraging such things as Puppet or Ansible, or leverage things as Vagrant to go kick off a topology. This is not really meant to supplant them, but more to help people that maybe have not had a chance to use any of those tools see what's going on in a very clear and open fashion to be able to then get you prepared for going and looking at how the network automation can make it a lot simpler, um, but now that you know what actually is going on underneath it. So once this actually, so this topology that we have will also allow us to do a couple of sample configuration setups. Two that I've created are a layer three topology with OSPF unnumbered, and one, and the second one is a layer two topology that leverages CLAG. All of the configurations that we're generating are ones that would be able to operate on a production box. It's just happening inside the virtual machine. I'm simulating a network management workstation, say as you would actually have in production, that would be vending out the DHCP addresses, the ZTP script, or other such functions that you may have in the real world. And so this can be a template to go and start on what you may actually do in an actual production environment. Diving into a little more details, what we have here is I'm running a standard version of VirtualBox with the add-on packs installed. Um, the add-on pack is just there to ensure that it supports all of the NICs that the management workstation uses. I've downloaded the Cumulus VX um, uh, uh, OVA from our website, which the URL is there on the screen, and this document will be, pre will be pr uh, presented later for you to be able to get the URL so you don't have to madly scrabble them down. Um, and then the final one is the management workstation which I created. And there is now an article up on our community portal that talks about how you can leverage this in your own environment to go and try out things that I probably haven't even thought of. So with that, let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at the demo. So I hope everyone is seeing uh, in my desktop now which I've logged into a machine, which what I have going on here is I've downloaded the two OVAs. One is the Keynote VX, as you get from our website, and the Management OVA, as I talked about, that you can get through our community portal. The first thing I will do is install the Cumulus VX OVA. This will take just a moment to do its normal import. And once that's complete, we can then go and install the Management OVA which acts as our hotbox or our control system for this setup. This will take a little longer just because it is a, you know, a full installation of Ubuntu 14.04 with a slightly larger hard drive, so it'll take a couple of seconds to load. As this is loading, the next thing that we're going to do is after all of these systems are set up, is we're going to run a set of commands that will clone the Cumulus VX image into the two leaves and two spines, and then run a set of commands that will go and set all of the connectivity up. Something that's important to note here is, again, like I said, I'm doing this manually just so it's very clear what's actually going on. 
applications like Vagrant, um, applications like GNS3 can definitely do all of these things automatically for you. So I'm more publishing this and showing this so that you kind of understand what's going on in detail underneath so that maybe you can write your own script or do something complicated that may not be as easy through say a GUI or other such ways. So please don't take this as the only way to go do it. It's just something that I cooked up to be able to show what's going on. So now what I'm going to go do is I'm going to go run the four commands to clone the machines. And what we will see is as they go across, we'll start seeing a pop-up of the various leads in the two spines coming up inside of the virtual box. And I need to hit return on one of them. Okay. Now that we have the four machines, we need to go through and set up the connectivity for them. Um, all of the commands that I'm running here are all up on that community post that I talked about. Um, you can definitely work through them. They are just using the standard virtual box command. Another important thing is also that this will work both on a PC and a Mac. So some of the dependencies that you may see in some of the suggested examples of leveraging uh, Vagrant with Ansible, which may have a bit of a problem in a PC environment, you would not necessarily run into here. So now that we've run all of this, what we have now is the two leaves, two spine. They have all the connectivity between them. As you can see, the, the network connections names here have been populated that I ran with. So we're ready to get going. So let's start the management workstation. And this will take a few moments to come up. And what this is going to provide is DHCP so um, that we can uh, have an IP address on their out-of-band uh, uh, interface. It will also provide ZPP, which will install the SSH public keys so that I can log into each of the four uh, virtual machines without having to use any passwords. Um, as is called out in the uh, community post, if I could type correctly, sorry. Uh, we just are using the uh, username root with the standard uh, Keyman of Linux password. Now that this is up and running, we can go and start the four virtual machines. I'm going to drop the windows out of the way because we'll be doing almost everything inside of the, the uh, management machine. But we'll start the four of these so that we have brought up the little test network that we're going to be running on. This will take a couple of moments for it to boot through the normal installation. The one thing I will show, one thing that's going to happen is ZTP will install those public keys. And now what I'll be able to do is go and log into any of them without having to uh, enter a password. Now, since I've never connected to it before, I definitely get the normal open SSH prompt to say, do I want to save that key? And the other thing that we will see is that the, inter the interfaces file is the normal default one. One of the things that I've done in this VM is there's a directory called backup, which then has pre-canned configurations for both the CLAG L2 environment and the OSPF unnumbered L3 environment. So let's start with the OSPF. And what I have in here is all of the pre-generated commands. Now, this is not definitely a very good way to fully automate your network. Um, this is not necessarily very repeatable. But this gives you a basic template of all of the configuration commands you may need for, for setting up either of these two scenarios that you then can go integrate and leverage. Again, we have a number of our standard uh, demonstrations published up on GitHub that you could then install Ansible or Puppet or Chef on this management workstation and push out the configurations leveraging those automation tools just as you would in our workbench environment. So there's lots of ways to extend from here. This is just a very basic example to get you started. The final thing I did is just made a really simple, here, we'll take a look at it, a really simple script that just goes and SCPs all the files over. Because I've never connected to a couple of them before, it will go and have to install all of them. So now all of the configuration files are prepped and running over there. So all I need to do is reboot the machines. So I'll step through the four of them. and reboot them. 
This will take a couple of moments while the virtual machines are rebooting in the background. And then we can log into the first leaf and look at the topology. And it should be coming up right about now. Okay. The first thing we can do is let's see that we have our neighbors. And we have, the, we have two neighbors to each of the two spines. And we can take a look at our route table. We can see that we have fully learned the OSPF route table, inclusive of the local address, 10.4.1.0, which is on our local bridge, that I could now go launch a virtual machine on to actually you know, emulate an end-to-end -end host connectivity. I've also gone and learned the remote address of 10.4.2.0, which is from leaf number two. And we can validate that we have connectivity to that, and network is, the network is passing traffic. So at this point in time, I could use this as a way to go test migration to BTP, bring up virtual machines, add more devices, scale things out, or just go and take a look at the configurations um, and what is actually included and experiment with them. Now, let's say you're more in a layer two environment. We can go, and I've provided those same sets of commands, the same push script, which will copy all of the files over, we run through the same set of things to reboot them, and now they will come up in a layer two mode. Which again, we can hop in and take a look at it. In this setup, I've set up the trunking for VLANs across the network. Um, we then have IP addresses on the two leaves that are meant to, go sh to be able to write connectivity tests between the two of them with the two spines acting as the CLAG um, uh, shared nodes that we can go and then test bringing links down and validating that the topology reconfigures and such. Again, we should be ready to SSH back into it. And now if we look, we now have a much smaller routing table because we're actually only in a bridging mode, but I still have connectivity to the remote leaf, which I still have there. And now I can start taking a look at the bridge table. FDB. So now you can see that I've learned MAC addresses, including the remote one right here at the bottom, VLAN number four. So again, this is meant just to be a sample taste of things that you can do, not meant to be completely comprehensive of all the things that you do, but I hope this definitely gives you a thought of some of the things that you can start scaling out to and testing out with Cumulus VX. Back to the sharing. So again, I hope that demo got you started on some of the things that you can do with Cumulus VX. Um, we'd like to also just show some of the uh, various testimonials that we've had from people that were in our beta program prior to our releasing of this that has covered various different areas of both demonstration, internally testing, learning new things inside of the command line and how to get their team prepared for a transition to new environments, prototyping of being able to build, test, and verify new applications and new solutions running on top of it, and then also development environment where they are working on applications that run inside of Cumulus Linux to be able to go and uh, then run actually on the production environment and the production version of, of Cumulus Linux or Cumulus RMP. So I hope that's been a good you know, introduction to all of this for you, and I'd like to open it up to any questions that we may have. Thank you, David. Um, we'll move over to the Q&A section now. Um, one of the questions that I've received is, uh, what is a management.ova, and can we have that for VMware ESX? Uh, yes, so the management OVA is uh, simply uh, the open um, virtual appliance, which is a container file from VirtualBox. Um, the OVA itself is simply an installation of uh, uh, Ubuntu Linux uh, LTS 14.04, which has Apache and um, ISC DHCP server installed in it. Um, I have not currently worked on trying to get that to work inside of a um, vSphere um, 
uh, set up, but there should not be any problems for doing that. So definitely I will take a look at trying to see if we can get that up and running um, uh, and, and get that working in that environment. That's not very hard to do. Thank you. Um, how is this charged? Um, well, so let's start. Sorry? Uh, go ahead, please. Okay, uh, so uh, Keynote VX is a, uh, is a free product. It is an open product that leverages just the tool sets that we use on top of Cumulus Linux. You simply need to go to the Cumulus Linux website and the URL that I provided earlier to go and download um, the OVA there or the virtual box deployment, which is right here, um, or um, the KDM deployment and then run it then in the hypervisor of your choice. Um, now, this can get you started to then be able to go and understand how you may be able to leverage a production Cumulus Linux or Cumulus RMP on real hardware. And at that point, it would probably be best to bring in your, your local account team. Okay, uh, next question. I'm running an SPB network. Will Cumulus VX be of any assistance? Uh, can you repeat the, uh, the acronym? S STP? SSPB Network 802.1 AQ. Um, I don't need to take that offline. I, offline. Okay. I can't answer that right off the top of my head, but we will definitely follow up with you on that. Okay. Um, can I use uh, Cumulus to do labs with VOLTE? Um, that's a good question. You Probably can. Um, it is not something that I'm aware that we have tested at all. Um, I would definitely be very interested in if you tried that out uh, to post on our community portal to let other people know that that, that that does or does not work. But I don't see why it should not work. Again, um, Cumulus Linux is built directly on top of the um, uh, Linux kernel. So a lot of what we do naturally already occurs inside of the kernel, and the Linux kernel is able to already forward packets. So in effect, we're showing what the standard Linux kernel can do um, with Cumulus VX just with our additional tool sets around it to make your life easier. So I don't foresee a reason why it would not work, but definitely something to test out. Okay. Uh, we have a few more questions. Um, What is the difference between Cumulus Linux and Cumulus VX? So the difference between the two is that Cumulus VX is meant to only be a virtual machine environment meant to run in a hypervisor like VirtualBox, VMware, uh, vSphere, or KVM. It has the standard sets of tools that you may find inside of uh, Cumulus Linux distribution, but it has absolutely no hardware offload. So the difference between it and standard Cumulus Linux is Cumulus Linux is meant to operate on some of the commodity white box and bright box solutions that you find for multiple hardware suppliers, which have an underlying hardware ASIC which can forward the traffic at line rate. Um, because Cumulus VX is meant to only be in a virtual environment, it cannot forward packets at line rate, nor is it meant to. So the distinction is more, do I want something to test in a virtual environment versus a physical hardware platform that is meant to operate in a production environment? Okay. Uh, will this work with VMware Workstation? Uh, we have done testing to show that this will work with VMware Fusion and also VMware vSphere. Okay. Uh, next question. Will there be a GUI interface with Cumulus VX? Um, that's probably a best question to be to be taken offline. Um, at a very high level, um, at this point in time, uh, we don't currently have any articulated public conversations about um, having the uh, a GUI included in the standard Cumulus Linux portfolio. Um, but if it was included there, then uh, VX would ultimately inherit that um, since they are very closely related to one another. Okay. Um, is Ansible slash Puppet Master pre-installed in Management Station? Is it possible to do the demo for Ansible slash Puppet integration in future sessions? Uh, 
It, that is not current. That's a very good question. That is not currently installed in the management OVA that um, is now posted up on the community portal. Um, it would be very easy to add on top of that, and then also, um, you know, show how it can be done. Um, there is on, an ongoing internal conversation about having a follow-up webinar about that, but I don't know exactly when that's going to be scheduled. But that is something that we're talking about doing. Great. Uh, am I able to inject traffic with Cumulus? For example, 1,000 uh, OSPF routes into a single switch? Um, you definitely could. Um, uh, there are multiple ways since we leverage both Quagga and you can leverage BIRD um, to be able to go inject routes um, and, lever and send them to another system. Um, so that definitely should be possible. Um, I can't say it's something I've actually tried with Cumulus VX, but um, I don't think that there would be a, a natural limitation to that where you could not accomplish it. Okay. How large can the L2 MAC address tables get? Is this just a function of the memory of the VM? Uh, yes, it's definitely going to be a function of the memory of the VM, just as in the hardware platform, it's a function of the underlying hardware's ability to carry the layer 2 MAC addresses. Is Cumulus VX a precursor to a production-ready re research? Um, that's not anything that we can comment about at this point in time. Okay. Uh, in terms of multicast routing, which features are supported, such as MLTP? Um, so Cumulus VX is directly derived from the Cumulus Linux. So um, all of the features will be a subset of what you would find there. Um, so this would probably be a good opportunity to talk to your account team about what's supported, or you may also find up on our website the feature sets that are supported there. Is the management VM more like an SDN controller? Um, it definitely can be the foundation to be able to support an SDN controller, but that's not what it's currently set up to do. Again, it's just a basic installation of Ubuntu um, uh, Server LTS 14.04, um, and you can definitely install additional packages that can go and act as it. Um, uh, you know, the fundamental focus of Cumulus VX is to be able to simulate what you may be doing in production. And so this is the reason I created the management workstation, was to simulate that out-of-band management centralized controller you may have in your production environment and give you a place to go and start simulating what you could actually do in the real world. So adding in, you know, some form of route controller, adding in Ansible, adding in Puppet or Salt or any of the other things we've discussed would be very easy to do here and simulate it inside of your virtual environment, um, you know, on your desktop or laptop. Yeah, and this is, this is Mohit here. I'd, I'd just like to add to David's comment there. On our community right now, we have posts uh, around running um, VX with NFX. Um, so the controller question, if you're looking to try out VX with NSX, there is a community post that details um, how that might work. Um, and also we have uh, automation posts on our community. So if you go to community.cumulusnetworks.com, you'll find both uh, NSX uh, controller posts and automation posts that might be useful for people looking to do that with VX. Great. Will Cumulus be releasing lab grades, or are you going to leave that sort of thing to the community? Our focus with Keynotes VX is definitely going to be in the community, but we have that we have kickstarted that with you know a number of uh, employees that have gone and posted articles, including the set of demos that I just ran through with you. So I would expect it to be a mix of each of them. Um, you know, as we come up with uh, you know interesting ideas or things that are useful for people, we will definitely publish it in the community so that it's open and remixable and extendable. Um, but if anyone comes up with something interesting, you know that's what the community is there for for them to be able to share as well. Okay. Um, next question. It's, is it possible to run BGP with VX? Yes, definitely. Um, you know, uh, Cumulus VX has the standard Quagga suite, as you would find inside of the Cumulus Linux distribution. Um, it supports BGP and OSPF, unnumbered for both of them. Um, uh, I just didn't show that in the demo here. Um, that would be fairly simple to create the set of CAN configs for it. Um, so if anybody would like to do that and post it to the community, I'm sure people would love that, um, or one of us, you know, we'll, we'll probably take it on ourselves to add that to the repository. We actually have one answer as well uh, from Matt Rao. He says, I work for DNS3. You can use DNS3 to emulate the VX. Um, 
Next question. Yes. What's the yes. Yes. Uh, Go ahead, David. All I'm going to say is yes. Uh, again, GNS3 uh, through our KVM setup and also this ability to talk to VirtualBox is definitely an option. Um, uh, again, we don't. I don't mean to be recommending that you only do it in VirtualBox or you only do it in vSphere. Um, uh, as I said at the start, like there are multiple automation ways. GNS3 is definitely one of them to help you automatically build that topology. Um, so in some respects, it's sort of what fits the best model for what you're trying to accomplish. I've definitely used GNS3 extensively in the past, so. Um, uh, that's a great way to go. Okay. Um, we'll try to answer a couple of more questions before we sign off. Uh, what's the recommended way to install Ansible on the management VM? Um, uh, that one I may not have the perfect answer to. So what I would suggest is um, we because of the fact that it's a standard Ubuntu distribution, um, it has the normal app repository to be able to pull down Ansible from Ubuntu. Um, so that would probably be my de facto place to start. Um, I'm not totally aware of what the package synchronization is between the Ubuntu distribution um, top of tree and say what is the most current with Ansible. So you might want to check and see what exactly the difference between those two versions are. Um, once you then have it installed, like I said, we have a number of Ansible modules that you can then leverage and run on top of it. Um, and you can find up on our GitHub. Um, uh, with respect to how to easily program the boxes. That's at least where I would start. Um, there may be other interesting ways, like uh, I believe Ansible has their own repo that might be a way to get a newer package. Again, I'm not super versed in that, so, so that may take a little bit of research. Okay. Um, will Cumulus support private VLANs and LZ security features and commands? Um, those are future things that we do have to talk about on the roadmap for our Cumulus Linux release. So that would be something we would definitely want to defer to your local account team. So um, you know, please reach out to them and they can help you with the future looking directions of the, the general product. And again, once Cumulus Linux was meant to have that, then Cumulus VX would be able to inherit that as a way to go test it out. Great. Um, is is VX OpenStack ready if you want to leverage OpenStack to easily build a larger test bed? Um, I don't know the answer solidly on that. Um, so that would be one that we should take offline and follow up with you on. Okay. Great. Uh, we are almost running out of time here, and uh, it's been a great session, uh, and we've had some great questions so far. Uh, we haven't had time to answer all the questions, but some of them uh, that David mentioned that we will take uh, offline. We'll try to get in touch with you individually and try to answer these questions. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us today for this webinar. Uh, it's been great having you here. Do join us for our next webinar, which is Manage Your Switches Like Servers with Puppet Labs on September 24th same time, 10.30 a.m. Pacific U.S. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Have a great day.